Okay, now it's now now we start recording, and now I remove the the waiting room thing, so that means that the people will join now. Okay. Hey there. Hello. Oh, okay. hello, I see. Hi. Hello, Rob. Hi, you're going to, let's hello. see, let's, in case you don't know, I don't, you may or may not, but uh, Matt can't make it today because I we know, have we are, a new federal holiday, yes. Yes, you, you have surprisingly got a new federal holiday. <laughs> right, yes. Overnight. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That was oh, one of the good news. What's that? <laughs> that was faster than any vaccine rollout. The president signed it the other day, and now it's already in, in effect. So. Yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Aisha has also excused herself, but before that uh, holiday thing, right? She has a day off today, so we are without ONC. And Matt has said I shall do the introduction. Uh, as a substitute for him, so um, I've prepared a, an agenda slide, but let me share that. Um, so, da, da, da. let's share that. Oh, oh my, I, I, I have two screens. I need to make sure that I share the right one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's always a, okay, how can I do Are that? you going to record this, Jürgen? Uh, yes, so we are recording this because Aisha um, and, and also Matt now, uh, yeah. they would like yeah. to listen to the oh. to the session. Right, yeah, I, I see the thing up on the street in the corner now. I didn't notice it before. But yeah. So let's, uh, do you see the slide now? Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's good. So I now I need to make sure that I see your faces. That's a bit always a, a new experience with these interfaces. And because if I share, then I don't see. You can see them, but you just but you have to pop it up as a separate um, strip yeah. or something. <laughs> Uh, that's a, that's a, ah, here it is. I, uh, okay, I got it. <laughs> yeah. That's a bit of a rocket science, isn't it? So, yeah. okay. Okay, very well. Good. So, I think we, I'm not sure if someone is joining, but I, I would say let's start. So, uh, um, a warm welcome um, to all the dear GDHP IPS working group uh, members uh, and friends and colleagues. Um, we've now prepared for you today an uh, IG Connect on VIP tour. This is uh, a thing we normally do face to face on site, but since we are now all virtual, we, uh, we found a way to do that virtual. It's not the same emotional experience, so to speak, because the drinks are not here, but uh, <laughs> We hope to give you an yeah. impression that a Connected On is really a very impactful event, uh, not only for the for the for the software products and, and the quality of them, but also for community building and team building and you know energizing um, the people and so on. So this is what we have prepared uh, today for you. So the first will be an introduction on IEG and IEG Europe from. Uh, from Andreas Klingler, who is the vendor co-chair from IIG Europe. The other co-chair, Stefan Spani, uh, unfortunately is blocked now, exactly now, so he cannot be present. He apologized. Uh, then we hand uh, over to Charles Parisot, um, who acts here as an IIG international board member, to explain the IIG methodology. And he will also take over the IIG Connected on introduction part because uh, Claudia is on the line, I think, but he says he has a very unstable internet connection. So he would feel more comfortable 
if Charles covers this part as well. Uh, and then uh, we go into the depth, so to speak. This is this would now be the time where you all uh, take your hands and uh, and enter the floor, visit and, and walk uh, along and in between all the uh, people sitting there and testing, which is a virtual connected on floor visit. Uh, so Steve Moore will, um, who is from IG USA, uh, uh, will present you know the tool and how this all works and how people work with that. And then uh, as a last, uh, uh, you will get an impression of uh, vendors who are, uh, or actually have, because the connector is over since two hours, but uh, they mm. are happily are, are joining this call for presenting that to you. Uh, but these vendors have tested IPS at the Connectodon, and they will give you uh, a live impression of their product and how they do when they sit on their laptop. So uh, kind of the same what you would see uh, in case you would walk through the floor and look on their monitors. Uh, we want to kind of simulate here online. I'm not sure if one of uh, ISA Caretech uh, will make it to the call because we they, they have said actually that they will uh, join. They are from Korea, um, but they have not shown up so far. Mm. So is, is anyone from ISA Caretech on this call right now? No, seems not so. So, yeah, apologies, but we have the other three vendors here. Um, and they all uh, have uh, uh, also in the pocket a strategic uh, perspective why they have uh, decided uh, to invest into the implementation of IPS, what their business reasons is, what their uh, experiences business-wise are. Uh, and uh, by that, we will we'll give a short impression on that during that slot, but actually uh, then we slip over into this uh, Q&A slot for the closing where you can ask freely your questions um, either to the IAG guys regarding the testing and the connected on methodology or the IPS vendors uh, for uh, IPS related subjects. Well, okay, so then um, I'm happy to uh, hand over to Andreas um, for the welcome from IG Europe side. Uh, Andreas, I, I just open up your slides. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Jürgen. Also, a very warm welcome from, from me on behalf of IHE Europe to this very special uh, VIP tour of the Connectathon for the members of the GDHP. Uh, normally, I would be doing this presentation together with uh, Stefan, but uh, as uh, Jürgen already said, unfortunately, Stefan is hindered today, but it's important uh, uh, that IHE is always uh, normally the user side and the vendor side working closely together. Uh, to really uh, advancing uh, e-health interoperability. Uh, the next slide, Jürgen. So what is IHE about? The IHE vision is uh, essentially to enable seamless uh, access to health information whenever and wh wherever it is needed. Uh, IHE does this by, as I said earlier, engaging uh, clinicians, health authorities, industry, and users combined um, to provide additional specifications to the normal standards which have been created to make them really usable on based on, on specific use cases. You will hear more about this later uh, in, in the talk by the other speakers. Now the next slide. Uh, so IHE Europe uh, actually was founded 20 years ago as a regional deployment organization of IHE. So IHE essentially is a glo really global organization with IHE International as the kind of umbrella organization and uh, deployment organizations uh, in various regions throughout the world, North America, obviously, of course, Asia, Australia, and definitely Europe. And uh, in all these regions, there are national uh, deployment organizations, uh, which then address uh, the specific uh, countries. The actual work, however, is being done uh, in the so-called domain committees, uh, the, the yellow boxes you see on the on the right side on, on the screen, which are grouped uh, around um, the, the usual clinical areas, let's, let's say, where really clinicians and vendors meet uh, together uh, to define the specifications, which are then published um, by IHE International on, on the website as so-called IHE profiles. 
and one of them uh, being uh, the profile on the international patient uh, summary, obviously. Just recently, uh, and we will hear about a little bit more about this later, especially from the colleagues involved in that uh, IG Catalyst was formed. And uh, to even uh, drive uh, the implementation and uh, testing uh, uh, facilities uh, further on, on a global level. Next slide. Yeah, IH Europe in, in, in the center there. So IH Europe has uh, the mission essentially to support the IH mission, mission, of course. And uh, IH Europe does this. Uh, by educating on the IG methodologies and specifications in Europe, but also on the European level, meaning the European Commission. Um, IG Europe contributes also directly to e-health projects of the European Commission, like EPSOS, Antelope, or lately in X e health um, IG Europe is also there to support uh, the national initiatives in the, in the countries uh, in, in Europe, in the, in the member states, essentially. Uh, with uh, knowledge, um, with having a place to come together and uh, exchange information, and uh, also sp some special collaborations with uh, national initiatives um, worldwide, especially like uh, from, from the US. We have also Steve Moore from the IHE USA uh, here in the call, and you will hear more for him later. Additionally, um, uh, IHE Europe drives test tool developments. Now we are the newly formed IHG Catalyst um, uh, in implemented. And uh, most importantly, especially for the talk today is from for the for this session, uh, IHG Europe ensures the yearly organization of the IHG Connectathon in Europe. Traditionally, this uh, Connectathon is actually organized by the uh, individual national initiatives um, circling around through, through Europe uh, in, uh, each year. Um, obviously, for obvious reasons, the last two, uh, Instances of the IHG Connectathon, uh, of course, have to be, uh, be performed online and uh, were then essentially organized by IHG Europe uh, directly, mostly. And um, IHG Europe is also uh, accepting additional services of IHG, uh, like IHG Catalyst, I mentioned that, the conformance assessment scheme, or just lately, also the IHG Share Zone, which has just uh, reached its, its pilot state, and you will for sure hear more about this, especially that. Uh, in the coming uh, weeks and months. Next slide. Yeah, just uh, to give you a general idea of the, the members of, of IHG Europe, uh, there are like 12 national initiatives, a couple of user organizations, uh, mostly prominently also the European Society of Radiologists is, is some of the core uh, organizations and also the French Society of Radiology um, uh, supporting uh, with the uh, information from the user side. And uh, as you see, quite a few uh, vendor organizations, vendors uh, which are active globally, uh, but also vendors which are, uh, have some focus on, on Europe. Next slide. Um, actually, 2021 is a very important year for IH Europe. I told already it has been founded 2001, so 20 years ago. We just did celebrate this week our 20th anniversary. Also, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, IG Catalyst was finally approved by the King of Belgium as a new uh, entity, a non-profit organization uh, to support um, uh, in, in general all uh, IG organizations uh, worldwide. We have just performed the 21st Connectathon online for the second time. We aim to not have to do it again online and hope to be able to be, have a face-to-face -face meeting next year. But even in this online scenario, we had 30 systems from 24 companies, four of them uh, testing the international patient summary, overall 110 participants and 31 monitors. The monitors are uh, volunteers uh, which are uh, there to verify the test executions and uh, of the of the uh, participating vendors, and we have also just completed the, the first IHE experience conference, which was also extremely successful. Uh, we had 50 speakers during 30 sessions, and 
um, we just got uh, the latest count of uh, around 300 uh, individual participants uh, in, in uh, all, over all the, all the sessions. So I think um, it was really a great success. Next slide. So in summary, IHG Europe has a 20 year experience in addressing national needs um, while uh, uh, making use of global solutions uh, to maximize really the reuse, which is of course especially important for, for the large international vendors, but makes it also easier in, in the deployment because uh, for, for uh, the national organizations, because it's you are building on, on proven uh, specifications. And uh, with the new foundation of the IHG Catalyst, which is essentially an operational arm of uh, IHG, uh, we think it's optimally positioned uh, to address uh, all these needs also in, in, in the future on a global level. And uh, with this, uh, I'm handing back uh, to, to Jürgen. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Andreas. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, does folks have any questions to Andreas on IG Europe? Okay, if not, then um, let's move over to the next point, which is uh, where you uh, uh, shall understand how IG actually works, what the IG methodology actually is. Um, uh, I hand over to Charles Parisot from uh, IH International. Uh, Charles, uh, yes, these are the slides, uh, and you're good to go. Thank you very much. So I'm uh, Charles Parisot. Uh, I'm a member of the IG uh, International uh, Board, and I would like to uh, uh, give you this. Uh, a more detailed understanding of the way IG uh, operates um, in terms of its overall methodology, how it complements and collaborates with uh, standard development organization, such as HL7, so DICOM, SNOMED, and, and, and many others. Um, so let's move to the first slide. So Andreas, um, has shown to you uh, how much the experience of testing is uh, significant in Aichi. This is just the uh, series of Aichi Connectathon in Europe. Um, you see that in Europe, we have a tradition to move the Connectathon from a city to city uh, every year. Um, and we do this uh, so that we have an opportunity to uh, educate national communities uh, and bring them in a very practical way um, in, uh, in, in enhancing their culture uh, on interoperability. Uh, parallel to this, and uh, Connectathon are also uh, being run in the USA. Uh, and the USA has even a couple more years of Connectathon because they started in 1998. Uh, and also a yearly Connectathon, and they are Connectathon as well, held uh, every year for the past uh, 15 years in Korea. Uh, we have a Connectathon run every year in China for at least uh, 10 years now. Uh, so you see the those Connectathon are consistently operated with a similar process. So when I will describe the uh, European uh, testing and the European Connectathon, um, you will rapidly uh, realize that uh, we've created a, a process which is actually the same uh, across the world. And we are simply targeting different uh, groups of uh, vendors and different cultures, different languages, and bringing them together in the same interability culture. Next slide. These are some of the critical principles uh, that are behind the IG Connectathon and that are actually forming the backbone of the of the IG uh, methodology. Uh, this methodology uh, has been effective since 1998, when the first profile uh, was developed, um, and it is uh, to be use case centric. IG does not believe that they are uh, generic solutions to interoperability. Uh, if you want to be practical, deploy, implement, and be effective and quick, 
um, you need to be use case centric. Um, and we do this with the user community and we have a whole process of uh, ranking and prioritizing uh, uh, the need of use cases. And today, um, more than uh, close to 200 use cases have been addressed uh, by IG and IG profile and our library of use cases, if you want, um, is increasing. So each time you open an IG profile, uh, the first five, 10, 15, 20 pages, depending on the complexity of the use case, um, is anchoring the need. Um, and we do this with the idea that uh, interoperability has to be, has to progress um, uh, one use case at a time. Uh, we are making sure that we are building consistency among those use cases and that use cases can be combined um, for deployment uh, projects. Excuse me. <coughs> Once use cases are in place, the IG profiles come into play. And we refuse to speak about standards and specification until a use case is stable, has been agreed um, and approved. Once uh, this is done, the profile specification can be uh, performed and we require IG profile to be based on standards. You cannot have proprietary things um, uh, in a standard and they need to be uh, using standards that are widely adopted, worldwide uh, uh, adopted. The, use, the IG profiles um, are uh, documented and developed at the international level. And this is allowing us to take on the next step. So when a use case is of relevant to an implementation, a product, um, then the use of the profile implementation makes sense. And it is the role of the connectathon to connect implementers uh, with a, a profile for a use case that they are interested in. So the connectathon is a way for those implementers to show their interest, to actually uh, build the profile into their uh, product. And we think this is important that the profile can be built in existing product that we don't have to redesign a drastically product uh, to add uh, uh, profile and add interoperability. And participants may choose to test one or more of the IG profile. With, it is also important that we are dealing with implementation with an eye on operational deployment. We are looking at product, things that are commercially available that can be deployed wide scale within a country, within multiple countries uh, across um, uh, the world. Uh, in that, the IG Connectathon is uh, different than the uh, HL7 Fire Connectathon. We are indeed uh, assuming that the, the standards have been tested. So when we adopt uh, Fire, for example, uh, we adapt, uh, we adopt uh, the most stable parts of the Fire and we bake them um, uh, into a profile and it's no longer time for vendors to be in a hackathon mode, that they are actually in an implementation mode. So we are expecting, and this is where uh, the rigor comes into play, the participants have to perform pre-test before uh, coming to the connectathon because we don't want uh, to waste other implementers uh, time uh, testing with implementation that would not be uh, mature enough. And we say, hey, come next year or go to the next connectathon somewhere else in the world. Uh, but it is important that uh, we're dealing with reasonably mature implementation. We don't want perfect implementation because one of the goal of the connectathon is to run uh, and execute uh, test plans that have been defined before the connectathon for that profile. So the connectathon is where the real world implementation is meeting the IG profile for a given use case. And they do that uh, uh, in a rigorous way with uh, test plans and a whole oversight structure. And I want to uh, spend a little bit on that uh, rigor uh, aspects on the testing. Next slide. So the rigor is coming from essentially four ingredients. Um, the first one, as I said, the test plan are predefined, but the test plans are loaded in an automated way 
uh, uh, into the Gazelle tool so that all of the uh, testing, uh, tested implementation will run the test plan on Gazelle and will uh, 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 track uh, the execution of that test plan uh, throughout the connectathon until success or until they give up because they're not mature enough. The uh, tests within the connectathon are not only tests against tools, but they're also tests against other implementation because we believe that a mature product has proven that it can test against another uh, mature implementation. And we require that at least three remote um, other implementation than the one being presented at the connectathon test successfully. Our experience has shown that that number of three is a golden number. If you work with another one, it's usually good. But if you, if you take a second one, you sometimes have hiccups. Um, and when you are successful with three, uh, you are pretty good and, and, uh, and prove, I would say, at a reasonable level, uh, an interoperability quality. The third step is the third element in the rigor uh, is that all of that testing is overseen by monitors. We have neutral people. I will explain to them how they are uh, selected, uh, but are the one that review what has been done, review the proof that the testing was successful, eventually ask questions to the product developers, review what's in their product, in their database, in their user interface, uh, and grant either a passing or a non-passing for every uh, uh, test that is being run. And testing a profile is running uh, tens of tests uh, uh, that have to be executed and each one validated. Last but not least, closing the loop with the fact that the test plans are in Gazelle. Gazelle is managing the testing throughout the process. It's a communication tool between the participants, but it's also in tracking audit uh, so that at the end of the connectathon, Every vendor knows exactly what test it has performed, where it has failed, and all of this is a record which is in the Gazelle um, a test tool, uh, thus bringing uh, feedback and quality control on the overall process. So this is important, but it is not sufficient. Along with this, there is a culture that we are developing and uh, growing and that we have grown over the years, um, which is to convince the participants that if you are not collaborating with other parties, you will fail. This seems to be an obvious statement, but I can tell you that in practice, uh, training the vendor staff in the thinking that yes, you are testing with your competitors, but in a connectathon and for interoperability, competition makes no sense. Collaboration makes sense. Uh, and that's a culture that we want to infuse into a, a as many people as possible. And this is why we have uh, thousands of people that have gone to Connectathon and that have undergone that, uh, that uh, culture change. We are attracting this participation and something participants appreciate is that it's an opportunity <coughs> excuse me, but to better understand IG profile and underlying standards. So this is an overall effectiveness, uh, next slide. And we want that uh, effectiveness to be shared by as many as possible. You've heard already that profiles are international in scope because we want to ensure reuse. So we perform the testing in Connectathon always at the international profile first. Some Connectathon have extended with some national extension of those profile. Uh, and this is perfectly fine, um, but we want to uh, and, uh, encourage international consistency and reuse. Test tools are important. We will hear about this in a, in a few slides, but uh, we don't. We believe that a spec is not complete unless they have a test plan and test tool associated uh, with that spec and that, uh, that profile. This is a key ingredient to accelerate deployment. Therefore, picking an IHE profile is, taking, is picking stable standard. It's picking well-documented standard in the context of a use case. It's minimizing deployment risk. And we believe that this is, uh, uh, that this is important. So what you see at the bottom is a number of critical attributes. Uh, today, there are several hundred millions of patients that are uh, those records are being exchanged using uh, IG profile. Uh, alone in the US, it's uh, uh, 
uh, with the else exchange with the uh, um, uh, care equality and so forth, uh, more than 120 million patient at the record, you exchange use ID. Oh. Um, note that the IG profile are also recognized by the European Commission. There are 27 of them uh, and they have made their way in uh, cross-border uh, exchange and, and uh, operational uh, deployment such as the e-health uh, digital service um, infrastructure. The other important thing, uh, element is that uh, we're not afraid in an IG profile to combine different standards. Uh, it is rare that a single standard is sufficient to address a use case. So combining in a definite way, the standards is an important element. Next. Next slide. So in, uh, in the end, what we've uh, demonstrated in Aichi is that uh, uh, the quality of standard is important. The standards must be robust, but this is not sufficient. Um, and using a better standard is always a good thing, uh, but uh, creating a profile which is fit for the use case um, is critical. And we have found this to be critical in all flavors of standards, be DICOM, be HL7, FIRE, uh, BHL 7 V2, the profiling is different in each one of those standards, but in all cases, this profiling is needed and the process of profiling plus of testing and the testing tool and the adoption environment uh, is equally important uh, to deploy uh, those standards in an effective way. Next slide. Next slide. So let's move now to the Connectathon and the fact that the Connectathon has recently uh, move to an online process. Um, our constituency has been uh, reluctant to move online because uh, trust and collaboration has always been one of the critical element. And when we have moved online, because we had to, um, we have tried as best as we can to, uh, to recreate uh, that environment of trust and collaboration. And after uh, three of those online connectathon, two in Europe um, and one in the uh, in the US in uh, March of this year. Um, most of the users have told us pretty good job. We were able to get uh, a good level of trust of collaboration, but this does not compare uh, to a face-to-face -face, uh, environment. So we are anxious to uh, uh, come back to a face-to-face but to continue uh, having online capabilities and online events, because we think that uh, combining the two is definitely a strength uh, for the future. Uh, being uh, online brings a lot of new challenges and those have been addressed um, in a successful way, we believe. You can ask that question to the vendor. Um, one of the less subtle one is the connectivity challenges and the proxies and a security measure that the various um, lab in which the products are being run uh, operate from. Um, we also have challenges of interaction between participants. The Gazelle tool was allowing uh, online interaction already to a high degree, uh, but this had to be taken uh, to the next step um, and grow those uh, communication. So yes, uh, the online is manageable and we will uh, and we are pretty proud of what we've accomplished uh, in those last uh, uh, two years on um, on moving the connectathon to be online next slide so for this uh, edition uh, some uh, numbers uh, that you've already heard from uh, Andreas so I will not uh, go deeper except on a couple numbers uh, we had uh, a system from uh, many different countries and it is actually a, uh, a, a important market uh, 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 harmonization uh, uh, element. Uh, 45 profile tested across many environment, hospital centric, regional, uh, uh, national HIEs, personal health devices, public health, uh, international information sharing will speak of the IPS in a minute. But the more important I want to uh, point I want to spend a minute on is the monitors. What are those monitors? Um, we had uh, 30 of them. 
uh, and they came from several different European countries. Uh, they are uh, vetted to make sure that they have no conflict of interest. Uh, they are sponsored by their IG uh, national uh, in order to recruit them. Most of them are coming from a hospital uh, uh, IT team on the user side and uh, coming from national uh, programs, so people that are engaged in uh, deployment. Um, all of those are volunteers. Uh, and we have uh, several of them that come from the USA because we are uh, encouraging the monitor group to be to be from more than uh, uh, the area of the Connectathon in order to maintain consistency in the culture. We had uh, Turkey and Gabon from Africa um, engage in the, in the, in the Connectathon where Gabon has performed its first uh, a pro national project, uh, project a thon, uh, actually a couple of months ago. Uh, and so they had uh, trained people and were able to uh, uh, participate there. Next slide. To give you a sense of uh, the various uh, country uh, they come from, uh, here is the people that we are uh, uh, recognizing. Um, and uh, we are very thankful for the various organization uh, that are uh, funding the time uh, for those uh, uh, volunteer monitors uh, to be operating. They operate under the oversight of IG uh, Catalyst staff, um, which are people that are full-time uh, dedicated to running Connectathon and who collaborate uh, and in support of other Connectathon across the world to ensure their consistency. Next slide. So let's uh, maybe skip this and uh, next slide because we have a, a dedicated uh, tool. Uh, let's take this slide as the last one. Uh, next slide. So what is this Gazelle tool? You have, uh, we've spoken about it. Um, I would like to, uh, Jorgen, give you the ball and uh, so that we can have uh, Alexander Berler from IG Catalyst uh, tell us uh, this tool that they are responsible for and what it does and how it works. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Charles, for this, um, for this presentation. Um, does anyone have any questions at this point of time to, to the testing? process and connect the dawn and all what Charles has just mentioned. Well, it's now all a bit remote and distant, but um, as I said, uh, we're looking forward to our next uh, IG connected on being face to face again. Uh, and it's uh, really uh, an experience to walk through the floors where those people are all sitting together and trying to get um, the tests done. So um, yeah, uh, Alexander, uh, Charles has just mentioned Alexander Berler. He is from IG Catalyst. Alexander, can you uh, reflect a little bit more on the Gazelle test platform? Uh, sure, you again. I can try to explain in two, three minutes uh, what is the essence of Gazelle. So uh, Gazelle is the test tool that we are using in the testing events. Uh, it's main composed of uh, three main groups of tools, uh, the, test man the uh, test management platform. So it's a, a meeting place for the vendors to connect and uh, communicate also with the monitors. So Gazelle has a proxy system, which means that all the messages exchanged pass through Gazelle. So that's the tool that the monitors use to be able to validate and check uh, all the traffic that is being done and the messages that are being tested based on the specific test plans uh, that each of the vendors select for their own systems to test. So uh, Gazelle is used obviously in the uh, uh, connectathons all around the globe. Uh, IG Catalyst maintains a stable uh, enterprise edition of Gazelle. Gazelle is an open source platform. Uh, anybody can download it and uh, install it. But the main role of Catalyst is to be able to create a stable version with all the content and the test tools and the test plans that is continuously evolving as, uh, uh, you know, interoperability is uh, something that evolves with new use cases, new integration profiles, and sometimes also uh, other types of specification can be used. So uh, Gazelle is also used uh, not only in the connectathons, it's used uh, as a um, 
uh, testing against the machine uh, in the conformity assessment mode. So it uh, operates the uh, HE International uh, Conformity Assessment Scheme with 16 uh, uh, mature uh, integration profiles that are widely used in the market. It's also supported uh, in projectathons, which means that we can support the national, regional, or other project uh, strategies with their own specifications that they can be based on IHE profiles and usually also on extensions of profiles, so with national flavors uh, that are needed. A good example of uh, such a case is the case of Switzerland, where we operate there. Uh, two platforms, one for the reference implementation, uh, which is used in projectathons, where every year new specifications are added by the uh, by Ekel Swiss and the Swiss government, and also a second version, which is a conformity assessment version used for the certification program of the Federal um, uh, Office of the Public Health. And in some cases, it's also used for deployment or pre-production testing. It's the case that uh, DigiSante is using Gazelle to uh, add systems uh, in the eHealth DSI network for cross-border healthcare. So it's a meeting place. It's an ecosystem of tools. Uh, all, all tools are open source. They are created by our team and also by other non-for-profit organizations uh, around the globe. So it's really an open ecosystem of tools that is constantly evolving. Um, uh, recent additions are mostly in the domain of uh, fire tooling, uh, since a lot of new uh, national or regional strategies are based on the last releases of uh, fire. Um, Jürgen, back to you. OK, uh, thank you, Alexander. Um, are there any questions to the Gazelle test platform at this point? Um, just to remember, a uh, reminder, we are now, have now captured all up to here. So we are now uh, entering this session here. So we get, oh, sorry, get more and more concrete into IPS. But before we start that, and I hand over to Steve Moore, uh, maybe just, uh, you know, in short words, uh, the difference maybe between um, an HL7 connectome and an IG connectome. They are happening at different stages of product maturity. So in an IEG connectome, when you test an IEG profile, for example, the IPS profile, you test the IPS content specification, but you also test the transport of it. So you pick some option, whether you pass it over um, with uh, RESTful services or uh, with SOAP services and so on. And with this other uh, um, attached kind of profiles, which are attached to that, there is uh, logging to be accomplished and all of these things. So when a, a vendor comes to the connected on, you usually have to test for practice, meaning, you know, a product it can be a prototype, but something which is kind of going to work into practice. And HL7 connected on is in a, an earlier stage. And please, Rob, connect me when I'm wrong. This is the stage where people come up with their early implementations um, to test their implementations according to the fire implementation guides. Um, and also for the purpose for you know advancing the specifications to share knowledge, build community. So every of these instances has its dedicated purpose, and together um, they accomplish uh, that at any stage you are uh, as one who creates software, um, you have the right place to go to. The final stage is the conformity assessment, uh, as Charles uh, mentioned which is uh, they really go with a certain product, with a certain version to an independent lab to get, uh, we don't call it like that, but to get a certificate, um, which is then uh, 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 can be used for procurement in real world projects. So that's kind of the, uh, the, the setting in short. And now um, I would like to hand over to Steve. Um, Steve, um, I open up the slides for you. 
Um, and Steve uh, will now provide a, a deep insight into the testing itself on the example of IPS. As said, on a connected on many profiles are tested. Of course, we, we take IPS <laughs> since this is the topic here. Um, and uh, yes, Steve, um, please. Uh, thank you, Jurgen. Uh, sure. So uh, my name is Steve Moore. I'm with IHG USA. I'm a technical project manager in a couple of domains. And uh, my main task is to uh, participate in committee meetings and manage testing for the domains that I manage. Uh, so next slide, please. Uh, this diagram, it might be a little busy, but it's uh, kind of shows the overall process uh, that we follow. The, the committees um, produce the profiles, which are HTML or PDF documents. Um, in parallel, the domain manager, and I'm one of a small number, um, we read the profiles. Uh, the developers uh, at the vendor implementations or open source groups are also reading at the same time. Um, uh, the domain managers write test cases while the developers are uh, developing their implementations. Uh, we come together at a connectathon, and the uh, participants are implementing the test cases, and the test cases are evaluated by monitors, as Charles had explained previously. And I purposely drew the slide this way because this is how we started 20 years ago. Test cases were written and um, in Word documents, Excel spreadsheets. Um, we managed our work lists by putting large pieces of paper on the wall and writing where we were in the process because we had no better tools to track the process. Uh, next slide, please. So you see a small change in the slide, but it's a large change in process. Um, now as a domain manager, after I have read the profile and I have extracted the requirements, I enter that data into a web-based application that's called the Gazelle Master Model. It is a database that models uh, the IHG profiles. So that's profiles, actors, options, and transactions. Uh, it also models the test cases. And so I enter the data into that system. Um, that system uh, forwards those models to one of uh, several instances of Gazelle Test Management. So there's an instance of Gazelle Test Management for Europe. Uh, there's a separate instance for Japan. There's a separate instance for uh, North America and probably some other ones that I am not aware of that Alexander would tell you about if we asked him. Um, so Gazelle Test Management is what the participants see. They will... Um, log in and use that, and I'll talk about that in just a minute, but the Gazelle Test Management System is what allows us to have a much more efficient connectathon process uh, than would have been possible if we were just using the manual tools that we did before, which, as I said, previously we used to write things on the walls. Uh, next slide, please. Um, Alexander and Charles have talked about Gazelle Test Management a little bit, so I will skip some of the information. I will point out that the test cases are linked to registration. So when a participant registers for a set of profiles and actors and possibly options, uh, that will drive their work list for the week. So they don't, so they only have to see what um, they want to see and not have to see all the other information that's in there. Uh, there is a work list that drives that. Uh, Gazelle will collect the evidence that is part of the testing process. So we have that for uh, test evaluation and also for historical purposes. There is a monitor work list to help drive the monitor so they know what their tasks are. Alexander mentioned a number of tools and so we have integration with those various tools. And then there are uh, grading pages that allow project managers such as myself to go through and perform final grading for our participants to tell them how they did with their specific profiles and actors and options. Next slide, please. So this is a, a stylized view of what might one might uh, think of for testing an uh, international patient summary uh, content creator. Um, and they've chosen the option for a FHIR document. 
So in Gazelle master model, I have entered the test cases and in blue, I have indicated they need to run one instance of test case one. This is probably a conformance test. So they run it against a tool and it's only needed one time. And to uh, create their testing week, they need to run multiple instances. And as Charles said, we've agreed to the number three, they run three instances of test case two. And so this is just a visual op uh, a visualization of what they would do for one profile, one actor and one option. And this pattern would repeat itself throughout the week. Um, they don't actually see this visualization, but it shows up in the Gazelle system through their work lists. Uh, next slide, please. Um, I've actually addressed this in my previous slide. And so I'll just point out quickly that the participants work through their work lists um, asynchronously. The monitors work through their work lists. Um, we keep up to date. And at the end of the week, the monitors have validated hopefully all of the work that participants have done. And each night and at the end of the week, I take those uh, individual test instances and I provide a final re grading report uh, that I mark in Gazelle Test Management and that the participants can review. Next slide, please. So this is an example of a dashboard that a participant would see. As I mentioned, it is tied to their registration. So the left side of the dashboard shows the tests that they are uh, supposed to run. The right side of the dashboard gives some metadata about whether the tests are required and optional, how many tests they need to run and test instances that are running. So this gives them a very detailed view of what they need to complete and what their current status is. Next slide, please. This is a higher level view of that same information. It is um, a pass fail view of their various um, uh, profile actors and options for which they have registered. So I have coned down the view to show only uh, for one of our participants, the actor they've registered for and their options. So as they complete their work during the week and I mark them pass, uh, these rows turn green. So it gives them a very high level view of what they've done, of what they've, what they've accomplished so that they can focus on the things that are not quite complete. So it's a very nice dashboard. And there are other features on the dashboard that I omitted um, in the interest of time that also allow them to drive their, um, their work schedule. Next slide, please. So this is in the context of the international patient summary. So this is stolen directly from the HL7 website. And so some of you will recognize this. And what I wanna point out is that um, during our testing process, we have to define what the expectations are for the participants. Um, I'm the one who's responsible for managing IPS testing. And so I tell them, this is what I would like you to do. I use test data that came from the Trillium Bridge project. So I leverage that work, but I write explicit test plans and give them direction. We focused on the three required sections in the IPS, IPS composition. That's medication summary, allergies, and tolerances, and problem list. And we also added immunizations because that is certainly an important topic today. Um, in this COVID era that we live in. So that is a uh, brief and quick tour through uh, Connectathon testing process and how we use the Gazelle tool. And now I will turn um, control back to Jurgen. Sorry, I was on mute. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Steve. Um, and uh, let's quickly proceed now to Charles again, because we're now entering the part where we talk to the uh, IPS uh, vendors. But I think, Charles, you have some few slides on explaining I IPS before, right? Yes. Uh, thank you, Jorgen. Next slide. So uh, Steve has uh, presented that, uh, that uh, overview of the major specification component. Um, in the uh, IPS. It's important to realize that the uh, IPS is a collaborative effort uh, between the CEN, uh, the uh, standardization body in Europe, uh, HL7, um, and uh, NIG. So um, as we move uh, on to the scoping of IPS, uh, CEN focused on defining uh, those blocks. What are they? What are the requirements? So in a sense, the use case 
uh, for IPS was, uh, was written by Sen. Next slide, please. Um, then HL7 uh, uh, developed uh, the IPS implementation guides, uh, allowing the IPS uh, content uh, scoped by uh, Sen um, to be supported either on the CDA standard or on the FIRE uh, uh, standard. Um, and it was very important for Aichi to keep both uh, uh, version and expression um, of the IPS, um, given the fact that they are uh, large uh, and massive deployments of CDA and a number of projects and countries that want to deploy the IPS um, based on CDA, but there are also many countries who wants to uh, deploy uh, the IPS uh, based on the uh, FIRE uh, documents. So having both in the IT profile was important. The other thing that uh, uh, we surveyed is the requirement for IPS was defined for unplanned care. Uh, however, we got a lot of requests from the user community, especially from the cross-border uh, area where people live on one side of the border uh, but are treated on the other side of the border. Uh, so, and that's a, uh, in a sense planned care. Referring, referring a patient across the border um, to hospital to a specialist is uh, very common uh, in uh, Europe in particular. So uh, what Aichi did is to look at the use of IPS for planned care um, and was uh, able to address this as a satisfactory level uh, for the user community, although it was not a requirement uh, initially uh, uh, scoped by uh, SEN. We then went on to remove some variation and to make sure that everything was testable. Um, and this is how the IG profile was uh, defined. The first testing of this profile happened at this uh, European Connectathon, and we can expect a further testing to happen um, either at uh, HL7 Connectathon or later uh, IG uh, uh, Connectathon. So that collaboration between SEN, HL7, um, and Aichi is very important and should continue um, in the support and the adoption uh, of IPS. So next slide, what we would like to do now is to um, move the uh, speaking uh, baton um, to a number of vendors. We have uh, uh, them present here three vendors, and I would like to start with uh, Daedalus, uh, and uh, no, 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 stay, stay on the slide. Uh, start with uh, Daedalus, uh, Lapo, uh, Bertini, and Umberto Capellini. You are here representing Daedalus, and we would like to hear um, as to why Daedalus uh, choose uh, to implement IPS and choose to come and test it at the European Connectathon, and how this testing uh, did, uh, did happen. Yeah, thank you, Charles. Um, so uh, this is Lapo Bertini. I am Interability Product uh, uh, Director at uh, Daedalus. Um, uh, Could you speak a little closer to your mic? Yes, you know, the, my mic is not working very well with Zoom. I don't know why, but that's, that's, okay. that's all right. Thank you very much, Charles, for reminding me. Um, so yes, uh, it's it's for Daedalus is now a global company. And we are operating on any continent, and, um, and we have a very... Uh, comprehensive set of installations on interoperability, uh, both at the regional level, at the provincial level, um, and at uh, hospital level. And it appeared to us very strategic to look into the International Patient Summers for a few reasons. Um, one is contingent to the situation of the pandemic and uh, looking at the WHO uh, specifications on, uh, on the use of the IPS for the uh, uh, vaccination certification, it seems to us that was very interesting, but that was contingent to the situation. But there's a more strategic one that is actually the bridging between the CDA and FIRE uh, type of approaches. And that really implemented um, something that it was, uh, uh, we felt missing and, um, and we were very excited to look, um, to look at this piece of standard for, um, uh, to add uh, to our collection of support in our, in our platform, our interoperability platform. And the bridging of the two, of the two um, uh, uh, formats, CDA and FIRE, really is uh, speaking to um, the longevity of this effort in our view. Um, CDA is the reality today, 
in most of the established and deployed um, uh, projects, Fire is certainly uh, looking at the future. And I think that's also for a vendor's perspective, and not only as a user perspective, but from a vendor's perspective, something that gives us uh, longevity. Um, and Connectaton it was for us the obvious launch choice in order to test it because we are very accustomed as a company uh, to come to the Connectatons for quality testing for our products uh, for over 20 years now. And we have as far uh, today in our Connectaton here in Europe uh, for this edition, five systems from Dedos they are testing uh, different, different type of profiles, different type of uh, domains, one of which is of course the IPS. And I'll all hand that over to Umberto here. Umberto is a product manager for, um, for interoperability, and he will show you the implementation we have tested here at the Connectathon. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lapo. I will share my screen now. Yes, I, I stopped sharing, so you should. Yeah. yeah. I hope everybody can see the screen. Yeah. So uh, welcome to this uh, very quick presentation. Uh, for the scope of this profile, IPS profile, we uh, added or implemented for our uh, um, uh, patient-centric content, uh, content viewer or clinical viewer called patient centric support for this profile. We are <coughs> sorry, we are participating to, the, to this profile as a director content consumer. So we are, uh, we are expecting a content creator to send uh, data to us, to, to send the documents and uh, summaries to us, and we are going to retrieve it and, uh, and display it, and rendering. So everything you see here is uh, live uh, transactions ongoing. So you, 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 have, you have a quick feel of the live connected on. So we important in our system are the two, test patients that were registered and uh, set up for, the, for this profile, which are Charles Merlot and Mary Giants. I'm going to select one of those. And we enter a, a page where we uh, implemented, a, again, a support for this uh, content uh, consumer uh, for IPS documents. Here, we would have a list of our documents uh, for, the single, for the patient, obviously. Uh, for, uh, for these transactions, for this connected on a test, we are uh, having one document for, for this patient and clicking on view, we're going to see the, the rendered version of this uh, patient summary. As you can see, there are all the various information sections like patient information, allergies, active problems, immunization, uh, medication, and so on. This is what, sorry, what regards the fire support for the IPS. We also had, uh, added to our component. This is an instance of the patients and optic deployed specific, specifically for the connector. So we will have here multiple other components in this dashboard. But for, for the sake of testing, we have only this one here. So in the document section, we have uh, the CDA part. So here we retrieve it the CDA for, 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 from, uh, from the XDS repository and display the CDA applying a style sheet to it. The, the system is, is configured to point directly to, to the source in this case, so it's retrieving uh, real time the information of the IPS and, and displaying it runtime. Yeah, and so, if I may add, Umberto, this is, of yeah. course, uh, uh, a prototype that you use for Connectatons purposes, but this is, a, as in best Connectaton tradition, will end up in a product um, uh, right after the Connectaton. So Connectaton is for testing things and, 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 and verifying that the, that the implementation is correct, and then they will transi transition to um, the company product. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's it for us. Uh, Umberto, uh, how was the testing uh, during the week? Uh, oh, did you successfully completed your testing? Did you get the yes. uh, passing grade? Yes, indeed. The, the testing was, went pretty smooth. We, we got all, all our uh, golden stars, so we're quite happy about that. And uh, yeah, it was 
quite different. Obviously, this, this year is uh, completely remote connected on, but uh, I think it was, it was it was going fine. We had good connection with the other vendors, and uh, yeah, that was good good feedback about it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dedalus. Let's move now to uh, to Gnoman, uh, I believe. Yes. So, Costas. Uh, yes, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very well. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so, Gnoman is a a company based in Greece, and we are focusing in interoperability projects and products. Uh, we are engaged uh, for several years into uh, projects from European Commission and it's DSI for exchanging documents between uh, European countries. So we have experience on uh, exchanging CDA documents uh, for this purpose. And now was the opportunity for us to uh, start implementing and introducing international patient summary in file format uh, in order to integrate to one of our products. This product named eHealth Pass is a platform for eHealth healthcare professionals and patients, which is based in four uh, uh, important um, points, which is privacy, uh, which is based in consent uh, and opt-in and opt-out tools in collaboration between patients and healthcare professional in self-management, which is about care plans, side effects registration, adherence metrics, and interoperability. So in case of interoperability, we have a functionality of importing patient summary deprescriptions from uh, um, is DSI uh, products. And now we had the possibility to import from IPS format and in order to populate data in our platform and give the possibility to patients to share this data with uh, the healthcare professionals. Uh, it was uh, a good opportunity to test in this connectathon with uh, three companies, the IPS feature, which is uh, first time tested and uh, find several issues which has been addressed during this week. So we were a step, uh, uh, we're in a better place now after this uh, testing week. So now Vespna will demonstrate a bit our two systems, the doctor application, the patient application, and that's it for us. Thank you. Uh, hello. Hello. Uh, so, uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Uh, here is the doctor application. Uh, the doctor can see uh, the patients that uh, he has consent. And by selecting uh, one patient, he can upload an uh, IAPS bundle either by link or by file. And then here uh, we can see the different uh, resources, the different sections. Uh, for example, immunizations, allergies. At the allergies, we can see also the, the reactions and uh, all the other information that the bundle has. Uh, uh, for this patient. Uh, we have also the, um, uh, the patient uh, uh, app. I will share it to give me a moment. Um, One important thing is uh, Despina will share the mobile app is that this all this information can be imported in personal health record of the patient in order, as I said before, to be shared with uh, his uh, healthcare professional. And this information can be shown here now in the mobile app. I will find it. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, can you see it? Yes. Okay. Um, so here is the list. Um, uh, 
of the different resources, uh, allergies, uh, conditions, uh, immunizations, and by hitting on more, uh, we can see extra information about some, uh, some resource. Uh, here is the list with all uh, the resources, and, but, uh, and we can filter them by date or by time. And uh, there's another tab uh, that we have the resources by category. Uh, so we can select a category and see uh, the different uh, conditions. And again, we can uh, see extra information about them by hitting on more. So this is about it. <laughs> Thank you. So you were able to receive uh, patient summaries. Were you able to create and send some as well? Yeah, yes. Yes. Okay, so you did both the creator and the consumer? Yes. Okay, yes, and in, both. in IPS in uh, FHIR uh, and CDA or only, only one of the two? Only FHIR uh, for this uh, testing event. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Let's move now to uh, the third uh, vendor, uh, who is uh, I care, I believe. I cure. I cure. Sorry, yes. uh, spelling. The floor is yours, Oksana. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. I will give. A, uh, I'm the CEO of I, I cure. I'm, I'm actually was very happy to see the slides that you shared. Uh, on uh, on the on the IPS uh, profile specifically because I understood actually which complexity stands behind because I come from the business and strategy side, but I understood actually uh, what the the level of design that you have behind of where our team is participating now, so I'm I'm personally impressed. So, um, IQR is uh, is the is the backend uh, platform for the medical uh, record and for the patient data. So we work. Among our clients are the EHR systems in Europe and also the global life science of pharmaceutical uh, companies. And that's why for us, the interoperability and compliance is at the core of our uh, what we bring to the clients. And that's why we actually participated in the last uh, three connectatons, um, one after another, we uh, go into the certifications and, and testing of, of the several um, uh, profiles that Antoine later will share. And uh, as soon as we noticed that you announced the release of the IPS last summer, we already put it on our roadmap that we will work on that as soon as you announced the first uh, testing session. With that, uh, that's why we were happy to see it happens uh, now and uh, participated in that one. And uh, the reason why uh, we believe also seeing where the World Health Organization moves and also the national uh, uh, digital systems, I, I, I believe that they move into the uh, truly functional interoperability, like seen here in, in Switzerland, because we are based in Switzerland and we have team between Switzerland and Belgium. Um, we see that uh, that IPS itself uh, is uh, brings the future-proof uh, technology uh, to to the vendors and and also to the healthcare providers. So now I give the floor to Antoine because he will share the experience of the testing um, and, and and show. We will not have a fancy app because we're at the back end. So I'm, I, but I know like what, what Antoine will show will be a fancy back end. Thank you. Antoine, you can uh, share your screen if you want to. But if we don't hear you, um... Maybe you're double muted somehow. I know we cannot hear you now. <laughs> we cannot hear you, Antoine. Okay, that was because my phone or my USB app decided it was possible to talk through him. You should hear me now. Is it yes. better? Okay, good. Yes. So as I was explaining, um, we are a, a backend provider. Basically, we are creating tools for other companies to develop solutions. The reason why we do that 
is that um, as a software developer, we, we realize that um, taking care of all the interoperability is quite an, an undertaking. So we did our first connectathon a bit less than one year ago. We did three in, in less than one year now. We focused first on XDS. Now we, we are taking care of IPS. Um, and it takes a lot of time to implement uh, interoperability correctly. So what we decided to do basically was, was to simplify the work for other software developer who had applications that weren't interoperable, uh, interoperable so that they could start interoperate with other people. So we decided, as uh, Oxana said, this uh, year to present um, a first implementation of IPS as a content creator fire not cda yet okay we tried but we are not quite ready for that um and we succeeded which is good news um the goal will be to in the coming years to go on and implement more profiles um and also to start providing that to our customers in belgium or elsewhere uh, one of our big customers in belgium he uh, is providing software for a bit more than three thousand doctors and he already marked his interest for integrated, uh, integrating IPS inside uh, his own uh, solution. One specific technical problem that we encountered for, for this uh, implementation is that all our data is encrypted in the database. So basically, we as a software developer, we cannot read the data that the doctors have been typing. So we have devised a system where doctors can upload their keys temporarily so that the IPS translation can happen. And then afterwards, the keys are lost so that the data stays secure. That's about all I have to say about that. OK, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Um, we have a fourth vendor, Easy Care Tech from Korea. But I don't think anyone was able to join. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll stay there. But uh, thanks a lot uh, to IQ, to Gnomon, and to uh, Dedalus to share with us a little bit their, their strategy and their stage of advancement and what they've accomplished um, at the uh, Connectathon. Uh, we go back to the slide. Thank you very much. And we have just a couple of slides to conclude because uh, one important message, next slide, is to... Uh, I cannot move the slide anymore. Yeah. I'm sorry, I cannot flip slides. Wait, I, I stopped the screen sharing. Maybe it's that one. Something is happening to these slides. I don't know what what happened, but I cannot I cannot flip slides. Sorry. Wait a second. Okay. So uh, uh, let me uh, take a presentation uh, for that. Uh, a final uh, set of things. Uh, you need to uh, provide sharing, screen sharing for me. Um, or maybe I was not allowed to share at all. Uh, you should uh, should be able to share now. Yes, perfect. Thank you. So uh, one the last point very briefly, because that's a, a, a point we are uh, careful to uh, uh, try to grow uh, the education uh, and the awareness um, uh, uh, around us in, in our ecosystem. Uh, how can the Connectathon result be, uh, be used? So what I'm showing here is a very simplistic view of the Connectathon result browsing. Uh, the Connectathon result uh, that have been accomplished uh, this week under the supervision of the monitors, uh, Steve Moore among other uh, others, um, all of those are going to be validated by the uh, the, the the Connectathon management uh, team. Uh, this will result in submitting the result uh, to the IG International Testing and Tool Committee, who's going to review the result. Um, review the processes and the feedback uh, from various monitors uh, to ensure that there was a rigorous process being held 
uh, and manage during the connectathon and will, uh, if all of that is clear, uh, validate the connectathon result that are going to make their way uh, to the connectathon result uh, uh, database. Uh, at that time, they become uh, public, um, like uh, connectathon result for the past uh, for the past twenty years. So there are many ways to navigate that database, but essentially, um, for each profile that the vendor has succeeded, given the role, uh, that's a little star that you see below. Um, given the actor uh, playing, in the case of IPS, it would be a creator actor or a consumer actor uh, for a given vendor. It would be either the CDA creator or the CDA uh, consumers or the uh, fire um, uh, creator or the fire consumer. So there would be different uh, actors there uh, distinguishing um, the capability of the vendor. And this will be recorded um, in this database. So that's kind of the uh, low level access um, and in order to use those connectathon results in the right way, um, what we have done is to uh, create um, a path and an understanding um, for a project, a deployment project, and EF deployment projects, either for hospitals or national, regional, or cross border. We've identified all of the steps uh, that are taken in managing interoperability in a project. Uh, starting from the policy alignment of interoperability, moving to the interoperability requirement. Uh, how, how do you document a use case in a, in a project? The, the specification uh, by referencing a profile and uh, a variety of, uh, of standards um, if you need to go beyond the profiles. Um, the testing strategy, what is a testing strategy? How to structure it? What are the options? Um, how to use the connector for a result as part of your testing strategy, the procurement of interoperability, how to call for IG profile compliance, either using connector for a result or conformity assessment uh, result, uh, then uh, testing at the time of deployment and the various deployment aspect to ensure interoperability and conformity, and finally keep on governing interoperability and what it is to govern interoperability uh, in a project. So we've identified all of those steps and uh, the various uh, elements uh, that uh, IGE provide, we do not provide all of the elements for all of those steps that we contribute uh, to many of those. Um, and uh, we have uh, highlighted in our website um, those, uh, various, uh, those various elements. So the connectathon is connected to uh, actual deployment and this is what uh, uh, is important and this is why uh, we believe that the IG Connectathon is bringing significant value um, to the world uh, of interoperability. This concludes my presentation. Back to you, Jorgen. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I, I have fixed my sharing problem, at least I think so. So you should now all see the agenda again. Um, well, thank you for uh, to all of the presenters for giving these insights into an IG Connectathon. I think it was quite a comprehensive overview and maybe uh, maybe a lot uh, of things to digest. And but we have now um, a couple of minutes left to um, to go for questions and answers um, for the audience. Is there any question you have regarding the uh, regarding IEG, regarding connected on, regarding uh, uh, some things the IPS vendors have said. Just speak up. You should be able to unmute, just speak up or, or put it in the chat, but I try to open up the chat. I Thank you for your supportive comments. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a problem with reading that. Ah, here is the chat. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah. Jürgen, this is Rob. Um, I don't so much have a question uh, per se, but I, I will say that I have learned a lot in this session. This has been really uh, quite excellent. I would like, I may have some other questions from some, for some of the vendors or, you know, um, kind of further thinking about how we can leverage uh, the gazelle tooling and, and other things uh, that'll be coming up. But I thought this was really excellent. I'm really glad that we, uh, we had this today. Yeah, very good. No, th thanks, Rob, for the kudos. Um, 
Yeah, testing is uh, sometimes a bit forgotten. You know, it's a very complex area as you have just, you know, got a, a brief overview on it, but it is, uh, it is crucial for the success of the project. And so um, um, whatever we do, we need to have that in our minds. So does anyone have a question? Uh, Jürgen, it's Steve Moore, and I've got a very detailed technical question as long as I have you and, and Rob Hausman on the line. Um, for the IPS testing this year, um, I selected coded values um, taken directly from the HL7 website. And so I'm looking forward to next year's testing. And I'm wondering, um, uh, I'd like to use plans that would use coded values that would be used in Europe. And I wonder what is the, if there is a plan to harmonize coded values across national boundaries. And mm -hmm. I, I am not trying to stir things up. Um, I no. honestly don't <laughs> no. know the answer. You poke directly in. Rob, do you want to answer on that? I can give a, yeah, and you can certainly add to it if you want as well. But uh, yes, uh, Steve, that's something that we have just been addressing explicitly because terminology is a big challenge, particularly getting international, you know, global agreement on terminology has been, uh, you know, a rather massive challenge. But uh, we have taken this first, taken the steps towards that. We've just Put together a proposal, uh, you know, for the GDHP members about uh, the terminologies that we are going to to use, and we'll be uh, doing kind of the first uh, the first uh, I guess effort at that on our mini connectathon coming up on Monday. And uh, so, uh, you know, I can provide you the information about you know the decisions that we've made so far and and what we'll be uh, trying to look at, but we are exactly moving in the direction that you were, were just asking about. So we, I think we have some initial answers for that and we will have more, you know, I think much more detail on that uh, you know, in the near future. Well, great, I'd, uh, I'd like to keep working with you and your group on that because uh, the, the terminology is something that I have um, not done a good enough job on in the past. And I would look forward to, in this case, uh, improving that in the future for our IHE testing. So wonderful. Yes, great. There are different groups uh, working on this and uh, and the GDHP is one of them. And I think they are influencing each other. So what, what mm -hmm. will happen in the GDHP is because <clears throat> the GDHP interoperability work stream has this work item to promote the IPS. How <clears throat> can it be best promoted by facilitating its deployment? But mm -hmm. to deploy and uh, interoperable deployment. But to facilitate that, we need to have a harmonization and agreement on uh, the terminologies for having semantic interoperability. So what GDHP is ahead, has as task ahead is what I uh, what Europe has already just have done yeah. for the European patient summary, meaning having 27 member states agreeing on the terminologies uh, which are exchanged between the countries. Okay, so far so good. In GDHP, we have another set of countries. In that case, it's now 30 countries globally distributed, so to speak, plus WHO, <coughs> plus, plus some other associations, which now have the same task ahead. Uh, Europe needed four years to do that. You know, I, I hope we do not need so much time on the GDHP level, but uh, basically, we need to agree on a set of terminologies for the different data elements uh, as a common, co common set of how it is exchanged. And this work, which is actually GDHP work, and which is actually formally scoped and closed within GDHP, will be, of course, influencing the IPS as such, because Rob is yes. in this group. And Rob is also uh, responsible for the IPS cross uh, SDO uh, uh, doings and all of that. So actually, these are all projects which are formally independent, but informally, they are very strongly dependent to each other. Um, and uh, that's how we proceed at the moment. Does that clarify uh, a bit? Yeah, Charles here, I would like to, to add one, one point and one advice. Uh, the advice is don't pick standards stay in the context of a use case, pick value set for specific data elements. This is the way Europe was able to progress with the 27 countries. When they discussed, should we pick SNOMED or not SNOMED or 
or uh, or whatever. That was an impossible discussion. So they, they replayed exactly the same lesson that Aichi has learned. Pick the standard in the context of a use case. Yeah. So in the world of terminology is pick the value set on the basis of one or several standards in some cases in the context of the IPS and do it value set by value set. Don't discuss the everything's nomad or, 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 yeah. or something else. Uh, very, very important, um, and and that's a lesson. And in the end, the master value set catalog of the uh, of the twenty seven European country uh, has a large amount of SNOMED, but that's SNOMED only for the value set that are widely adopted in the context uh, with SNOMED. And there are value set where SNOMED is abysmal, and saying you're going to use SNOMED for those value set is a nonsense. So. That's the reality. We need multiple standards <laughs> across the IPS yeah. for terminology. So if we accept this at the start, I think progress can be made. And I hope that the GDHP um, uh, take on that pragmatic route uh, that is accomplishing the end goal. I so, look forward to the outcome of that discussion and not the discussion itself. Yeah. <laughs> yes, of course. Me too. <laughs> so I will, yeah, but I, I can tell you that uh, th there is a, a 60 page document that reflect on how the value set were selected at the European level. They had to actually tell the story because in the end, people did not want it to accept the value set. They had to understand why did you pick this one based on that standard yeah, and not yeah. that one? Where was the rational to make that choice for this value set and that choice for that value set? So making a record of the discussion is a case where we need to do it here uh, for for terminologies that at least has been the experience yeah. on the in the HGS side. Well, let me just uh, add a little follow on to what Charles uh, has just said. I and 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 Jurgen, uh, you know, I think that you know we in, definitely intend to learn from the experiences of others, and hopefully we can learn you know, from the European experience and and not take another three or four years to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we can. Uh, we can leverage that, but I think that the approach that you, uh, you know, described, Charles, is is basically, I mean, uh, pretty much the way we were attacking the problem. So I think that we're pretty much in alignment. I think that we do, you know, we'll make the decisions. Have maybe it's a little bit of both. I mean, have sort of a global notion of what terminologies we may choose from, but choose particular terminologies based on. You know the use cases and particularly the the particular data elements and you know involved. So I, that's kind of how I'm approaching it. So I, so I have a comment on, on, on all this discussion as a vendor standpoint. So now as vendors, we have started implementing this. We're looking forward to the market, and uh, so we have to be careful on the timing here because market is um, is asking for stuff and we will provide stuff we will propose stuff based on ips so we have to be aligned on the expectations that we all have so this is an interesting effort but we want all to succeed we need to have this uh, covered on both hands certainly yeah okay so um we are actually over time so is there one last burning question maybe? No, then otherwise uh, I, I will conclude now. You will all get uh, the slide decks we have shared and we have also recorded this meeting. Um, we still have to decide if we just keep that internally or if we, uh, if we make it public, but uh, I think it probably becomes the middle uh, thing by that we share it within the IPS uh, group, but this is about ONC to decide. We will inform you the slides we, you will get uh, in any case. Uh, if you have some additional questions, um, just feel free to contact any one of us. Uh, we'll make sure that the contact information is in the slides. Uh, and it doesn't matter if it's uh, on the IG as the organization or if it relates to IG connectodons or if it relates relates on the Gazelle tool or any case, just if you have questions, um, um, feel free to contact uh, uh, the IG persons. By that, thank you very much for your attendance. And I wish you a very nice holiday. And I hope that we see uh, all of you again uh, on Monday at our mini Connected On 
uh, on IPS. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks so much. Bye. bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.